Hello and welcome to the Rogue Entity build tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to create a build interface so we can place buildable items like buildings or anything else. Uh, it'll, the tutorial will include an explanation of the U-List view, its features and benefits and why you'd use it over a normal scroll box. We're going to implement data asset driven list view. We're also going to implement the ability to place objects with location validation and uh, implement a build progression system so you can have uh, resources delivered to it builds or you can have a build over time whatever you need also configure input mode for placing objects using enhanced input which will allow us to place the uh, build objects and we'll also cover how to load data on demand using the data assets we'll also cover some side things like demonstrate methods to keep the player controller clean prevent it becoming a monster class how to use delegates and events for callbacks instead of just referencing back to other classes when we create our ui for our build menu we'll we'll do that in a reusable modular way and we'll and also demonstrate a method for managing ui it's going to be a fairly lengthy series so i'm going to break it into two or several videos um, it's not really necessary to have completed the previous videos in the rts series however it is recommended i'm going to be using things from the previous videos uh, you can recreate them quite easily like for example a player controller class pretty easy to create one of those we're not really using any existing stuff in the player controller class so you know you could just create a, a blank one and continue on things like the enhanced input though i'm not going to cover the setup for that i'll just be implementing the input that we need through the setup that i've covered already in one of my videos on the channel any video that covers something that you need i'll include in the description below i will be copying and pasting code um, I, I recommend that you actually download the project. It's available on Patreon for less than $3. It supports the channel and it helps me keep making these videos and it just, it'll be easy to follow along that way. Otherwise, I suggest just pausing as needed and copy pasting the code as required. I'm gonna start this series just with this intro video and just some housekeeping things. I, I recommend going through it even if, if you haven't done the previous tutorial as we'll be creating just the HUD setup. I'll, I'll just crack straight into that. So we'll start in C++. Start by creating a new folder. Um, I am going to be creating uh, my classes through Writer. However, it's exactly the same as if you do it through the editor. So if you, if you're not using Writer, I'm sure you might be able to do it in Visual Studio as well. But Writer's recently upgraded their interface to Unreal, so you can create classes quite easily. We're just going to start with the directory. I'm just going to call it Framework, and that's where the the part and other things will live eventually. So the HUD class was just going to call it, I'm prefixing everything with S for my, so use whatever prefix you're using for your project and then we're just going to look up the actor class called AHUD and inherit from that. So this HUD class will be the source of referencing for all UI. We're going to have references on the blueprint version of the HUD so we, we want to make this C++ class abstract. And the reason we do that is so it doesn't come up in the editor as a, something that's selectable because if we accidentally assign this to our game mode, for example, we won't have any of the references that we have assigned in Blueprint. So we'll make this abstract. I'm just going to clean up all the crap that gets put into a new class here. Well, it makes it hard to read. Now, we get, if you don't have the existing player controller which this is all the stuff that we're going to move to our hud so it's all the hud creation if you um creating from scratch just create this hud class include these variables and, and functions in your new hud class Just implement this function and we'll bring over the code from the player controller. I'll clean out this crap make it hard to read. And then we'll bring over the HUD creation from the player controller. So we just need to include user widget at the top. And we need to include a reference to our this HUD. Sorry, our HUD widget we're creating there, not this HUD. So now we need to call this. Oh, I'm just going to rename this because the capitals was 
bother me. But this is the HUD class. We'll assign that. If you if you haven't done the previous tutorials and have not created the HUD widget, just create a widget class that inherits from a user widget called HUD widget, and then from our player controller, we're going to reference instead of just calling create HUD function here, we're actually going to get the S HUD reference and call create HUD. And this is why we use a HUD actor because it's easily referenced from the player controller. It has the get HUD function. So we just cast it to our type, then we call create HUD. Make sure you include the S HUD reference. And you can see here, we just saved a bit of referencing unnecessary HUD stuff and we've shifted it all into a nice neat container. Cleans up the player controller. It's not a lot there in the player controller now, but you, later on when you've got a lot of UI, there'll be stuff all over the place. So now that we can just contain that in the HUD. And we'll be adding to the S HUD class in the build tutorial. I'll just point out in the HUD widget, if you're doing this tutorial from scratch, you don't need any of this formation stuff. You might need the player controller reference here later, but you don't need any of the formation stuff for this tutorial series. So back in our HUD class, we just, I just forgot to do a reference for the HUD widget. Make sure we got that, and then we're right to go into the editor. So in the editor, we're just going to do a bit of housekeeping. If you've got this existing project, you can follow along. Otherwise, uh, just create the folders anyway if you want. So we're going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it framework. This is usually where I keep our sort of game management type things. And in here I'll break it down into management. So that's like your game mode, game state, our HUD class that we're going to, we just created. Pretty much whatever's covered in here in the game mode. Except for the for player stuff, I'm going to break that out separately so that I'm going to add a player folder, and I'll add an AI folder as well. So the game mode, I'll put in the management folder, the player and the player controller, and the, I'll do the selection box as well, I'll put that in the player. And then the AI controller will be in the AI folder. And then the move marker I'll put in that under player as well. It's part of the player setup. And now we want to create our HUD class. So search for S HUD, we called it. And I'll call that WS HUD. And in here, we want to assign that reference to our HUD widget. And if you've got the categories the same, it should be UI HUD. And then we'll just assign that W HUD class. Probably should have called this HUD widget, actually, because it can get confusing now that we're using this HUD actor. So I might actually rename it to HUD widget. It's around a little less confusion. So we've got that reference there, so that'll be created when the begin play fires on the player controller. So in our game mode now, we just want to add that reference to our SHUD class. And if we didn't put that abstract in there, that, that you could accidentally select just the straight SHUD class, which would have no reference to the HUD anyway, and wouldn't work. Probably wouldn't even give you an error either. It's a hard one to find if you get it wrong. So that includes just the intro to the build tutorial and the if you've come across this video before the videos are out, the next one will be out anytime now. Otherwise, enjoy the Torah series and I'll see you in the next video.